right. Good afternoon and welcome to Techie Thursdays here at Nexogy. So I see that we have a lot of people here registered today. This is good. We're getting better. I think uh, that we're getting a lot of or plenty of attraction here uh, for mostly partners and customers. So welcome. Thank you very much for dedicating this short but interesting webinar. 30 minutes tops, sometimes even less, because we want to do it very practically and we want to do it so that you can get uh, the most out of your time. So today, what are we talking about today? Today, we're gonna to be talking about the auto attendant. So basically, um, what is an auto attendant? Well, you know, I didn't want to say it in my own words, so I was looking over at uh, what uh, Wikipedia had to say, and uh, in telephony, an automated attendant, basically, or virtual receptionist, allows callers to be automatically transferred to an extension to without the intervention of an uh, operator or receptionist. Many auto attendants will also offer simple menu systems, for example, press one for sales, two for service, and so on. Telephone callers will recognize an automated attendance system as one that greets calls incoming to an organization with a recorded greeting of the form, thank you for calling if you know your party's extensions, not to be confused with an IVR. So on a purely technical level, it could be argued that an auto attendant is very simple kind of IVR. However, in the telecom industry, and uh, hence both the PBX, uh, PBX service uh, industry, the terms IVR and auto attendant are generally considered distinct. An automated attendant serves a very specific purpose, replace a live operator and route calls, whereas an IVR can perform all sorts of functions, telephone banking, account inquiries, and all those things. So today we're going to be talking about auto attendant as um, part of our uh, services that are included in our service. So I uh, have Eric here, uh, expert tech support uh, here at Nexogy, who's going to run us a little bit about how to configure an auto attendant, how our auto attendant is uh, provisioned and configured, and all the basic functionality that the auto attendant has. Um, one of the things that we're going to go over today is how to route calls depending on uh, time frames or even different dates. If you're going to have a holiday and you know that you're going to be closed next Thursday from nine to five, how to route calls when that day and that time comes in. That can be handled uh, right here on the auto attendant. So what we're going to do right now is going to quickly, we're going to share our desktop right here. We're going to share our screen and show you how to configure the auto attendant here at Nexus. Bear with me for a second, and we're going to just put it up here really quick. And there you go. So, Eric, uh, tell us a little bit about um, how to create an auto attendant. We have a fresh customer, we have a new customer, and they have access to the portal. Obviously, our project uh, management team, that, that includes you, of course, has already explained to customers what it does. So, let's say that they understood. They're ready to go and they have access to the portal. What is the first thing that can be done here? Can you show me a little bit of the portal, how to configure an auto attendant? Absolutely. So the first thing you want to do is up top with an office manager scope, you want to have the right permission set and you're going to be able to hit this button up here to get into your auto attendance page. So that's going to show you any auto attendance that may have been configured or you can go ahead and set one up brand new. I have a test auto attendant here in place. It's extension 7575. Auto attendants do have their own extension, and we try to keep this extension range away from anything from what the customer might be using. So if the customer has a 1000 range, we'd probably like to create the auto attendants in the 8000 range just to avoid any confusion or any um, you know, call collision or anything like that. That makes sense. I mean, it has to be an extension because come to think about it, we can route toll-free numbers, uh, 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 regional numbers, to where? To an auto attendant, but uh, that auto attendant has to have a unique identifier. So that's the extension, right? That's the purpose. Exactly. Okay, so so having said that, um, Nexogy, for example, has one 866 one to a uh, tech support auto attendant, but also we have several numbers that are local to different cities that we dedicate to specific partners. So if you dial a 212 in New York City, I can hit that auto attendant because I'm basically routing that DID to the extension that was created. So that's why an auto attendant is also considered some sort of an endpoint and it has its own uh, extension. So you were saying? Yeah, so I have a test auto attendant created here. As you can see, it's extension 7575. And if I wanted to make any changes to this auto attendant, I can hit this little pencil right here to edit it 
or I can just click on the name of the auto attendant and it'll take me into the window where I can manage the settings of the auto attendant. Perfect. All right, so I see that it looks like pretty simple. Those are the, uh, the, the, the basically the buttons of uh, the numbers are, are on any uh, telephone dial pad, meaning that what you're gonna do here is you're gonna assign the, what happens to when a caller uh, is prompted to press whatever number depending on the menu so show me a little bit this one uh, on this specific auto attendant what's configured and how, what can what you know what can you do uh, uh how, all the edits all the changes that can happen on this uh screen right here yeah of course so there's there's a lot of things that can be done at the auto attendant screen you do see the name and extension of the auto attendant that you're editing so if you ever forget you have it right here at the top of your screen um, aside from all of the buttons which we're going to get into in just a second you can actually upload or record your voice you know voice greeting for the auto attendant right from this portal you can record or you can okay cool can you show me how to upload if i have a file that was professionally recorded how do, how do i upload that file very easy to do it says it right here click to add a new menu prompt so if i click right here or on the manage button a window is going to pop up and it's going to ask me if i want to upload or record so I'm assuming if you click on upload, it's going to ask, ask me to, to browse. browse and look for that. Okay, I get it. Correct. All right, so I don't have the file. I'm, uh, there's an emergency. We have to quickly leave the office for um, power is going to be cut out. So I need to upload a quick, uh, I, I need to record a quick uh, message. So is that what, it, what you do right here on the record? Absolutely. So as you can see, I'm logged in as extension 5295. So if I hit record, it's going to ask me if it wants me to send the call to my extension. In this case, we're about to lose power in the building. So I can actually eliminate this put in a cell phone number, 786 number, and have that give me a call to my cell phone and upload it there. This is to record the, uh, is this to, to, to record the, the greeting. Yeah. It's gonna call me so I can record the greeting. Correct. That sounds good. So I can do a quick change. Right to your extension. Menu saying, hey, I'm sorry. Uh, there's an anticipated uh, power outage in the, uh, in the building. We have to leave. Please call us at, and then you, whatever number. Excellent. Correct. Perfect. Okay. All right, so uh, walk me through the uh, configuration, you know, the first time configuration on, on, on an auto attendant. I've decided that one is for, uh, press one for English, press two for Spanish, then I, when, when I go to English, then press one for tech support, two for billing, three for directions, four for hours of operations, five for uh, dial by name or a list of uh, so show me how you do this. Is that, is that, it looks like pretty simple right here. Absolutely. It's extremely uh, friendly user interface. So obviously, if I put my mouse over option one, it's going to ask me which application I want to tie to the button one for the DTMF. So if I were to hit one, these are all the options that I can use to configure an auto attendant. In this case, you wanted to say press one for English, for example. Yes. So if, if that's the, the way I wanted to go, I can actually add a tier and that will actually allow me to set a new sub level of an auto attendant where I can have my own brand new recording and brand new options specific to only when somebody presses one in the main auto attendant. For a complete specific uh, different language. Correct. Okay. Perfect. All right. So let, let's keep it simple. Uh, let's stay with the, with, with the ones here. So first one for, for English, two for Spanish or, or, or whatever the uh, configuration. Is. Yeah. Can you show me the options that I have on, on, on pressing either either a digit when uh, prompt, prompted to the color? What options do I have? I saw a lot of little icons, but I don't know. What are those? What happens here? Well, these are the applications that you can configure to each option. So in short, you can make the call go to a specific user, whether it be a system user or a regular user uh, that has you know their own phone. You can connect the call to a conference. So if you have a scheduled conference, you can give them a dial-in number, press six to join the conference, let's say. You can create it to a call queue, so the call queue will ring multiple agents in a predefined order or in a set order. You can also make it go to a company directory. You can make the option go specific directly into somebody's voicemail to a specific extension's voicemail. For internal purposes, you can uh, make it go to voicemail management. So if you're outside of the office, you need to check your voicemails remotely. You can have a number to dial in and do the, and do so. You can send the call to an external number also. So in case you want to have an option for an on-call service, you know, if this is an emergency, press seven to reach the on-call doctor, you can have that do so. Or an answering service. Or an answering service. Internal service and that's, that, okay, that's yeah. pretty cool. I, I've seen those before, okay. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned you wanted to also prompt callers to press whatever option for our company hours, email address, any information that you want to display, you can actually make an option, play a recording, which you can also browse or record yourself. Oh, so I can also record that myself. I don't need to have that uh, on a file and then upload. Perfect. Correct. Correct. Excellent. 
Uh, you also have the option to repeat the greeting prompt. And if you're in a sub tier like we are right now, you can make it go into the previous menu. So if you've you know reached this menu by accident, press one, we'll take you right back to the beginning of the prompt. Okay, that looks that's pretty simple. I mean, that's a pretty interesting or pretty simple uh, user interface. Um, I think that any, any customer that, that gets a hold of the basic configuration, then they can take control of their own auto attendance and they don't even have to call us. So I think that in terms of uh, our, our, our functionality and features, it's pretty, pretty, pretty covered. Uh, it covers pretty much everything that's required. But I think that the nice thing here is that customers get control, maybe not even customers, but maybe the internal partners that want to charge for uh, managing their uh, customers uh, PBX, then they have this simple user interface where they can do all these. Um, that, that sounds pretty cool. Okay, perfect, perfect. Sure. All right, so um, going back to the uh, situation where we have a, a nine to five, right? And between the 8.59, I mean, 5.01 p.m. and 8.59 a.m. the next day, um, I want to route that call into a an automated uh, an auto attendant, right? I mean, not somebody that's going to answer the phone, but specifically ask for if you know your product's extension, you may dial it now and give a lot of options. Where do I set those time frames, even the dates? Assuming that when's the next holiday? Is it Memorial Day weekend? So let's say that Monday, uh, let's say it's May 26th, just to say a date. I want to obviously route the calls into either a message or simply um, prompt the, uh, the, the, the caller and let them know that we are closed for the holiday, but if you know your product's extension, you can dial at any time. Um, so where do we set those uh, time frames and dates? There's a, an option up here right next to the auto attendance option that says time frames. And that's where you would actually go and create your time block to apply that to whatever user you want to apply that to. Okay, so we create the time frames and can you show me the time frames? Is that going to, going to give me the option for days and, and, and times or is it just the time, is it both? So it depends on what you need it for. If you need something to be recurring, for example, every Monday for the rest of the year, for example, um, then yeah, you can definitely select a recurring time frame, such as uh, after hours or a lunch break, something that's going to be happening every week. If it's just a holiday, for example, something that's only one time a year, you want to use a specific date or range so that you can tell the system to begin at a certain time and to end at a certain time and not do the same thing next week. So this is what we do here at Nexogy. Yeah, and you know it because you've been here for, for quite a while. You know that every January, the first day, January the second, we get an email from, from, from uh, our, our lovely uh, Kate Lisa here, and we get we know exactly our holidays, and we know when we're supposed to be here and when we're not. So you're telling me that when we get that email, and I know that Martin Luther King is the first one, President's Day, Memorial Day, July 4th and so on. Can I set that up that very same day as in a set it and forget it? So we know for sure that when we go out on Labor Day, uh, we're going to be having a preset uh, auto attendant. Is, is, that, is that possible here? That's correct. That's correct. Normally what uh, most customers do themselves is they create their own holiday auto attendant, which they're going to use and share that amongst different holidays. And they would create their timeframes for the whole year in the beginning of the year to not have to worry about that and have to rush and forward their calls later. That's perfect. So I can just set that up at the beginning of the year, set it and forget it. And I know that those calls are not going to be sent to a phone that's not going to ring. I mean, uh, not going to pick up. It's not going to be sent to a voicemail that's not going to be heard. So everything is pretty much organized right here. Everything done through the portal. Very simple, very clean and easy to use. That's, I think, the most important thing that we're offering right here. So you're going to show us uh, how to configure perhaps a, uh, what do you put here, a Christmas for 2019? Yeah. All right, okay, how do, you, how do you go about that? So because Christmas is obviously not recurring, it's only a one-time event, uh, I would do a specific data range, and I can actually go back as far as I need to. So I can go all the way to December of 2019, and I know that Christmas is, what, the 25th? So I would set it up. So let's say I'm going to be out from the 24th, starting at let's say 5 p.m. and I'm not coming back up until let's say the 31st 
right? So let's just say that that's the day that we're going to come back, open up the office again. I can set that up to come back on the 31st at 9 a.m. when we open our doors. And that's Great. it. Very simple. That's actually pretty, pretty cool and pretty simple. Yeah. Let me ask you something. When you press two for customer service, press three for billing, and so on and so forth, you're sending this uh, uh, this prompt into either a person or a call queue. That's why I saw those icons uh, before on the auto attendant options because I'm, I'm able to send it to a specific single person or to a, uh, a queue. If I were to send it to a queue, I need to obviously have that queue ready before uh, I set up the auto attendant. So can we quickly see, we're, we're not gonna get into the call queues, but can, we, can you show me, for example, one of the call queues and then go to an auto attendant and see uh, how to select that specific uh, call queue that where a set of uh, agents or people are going to be able to answer the call if that prompt is selected. Absolutely. So right here, we, for example, we have our Doral sales team. And just like I mentioned about auto attendance, we have our an extension for each system user. So in this case, the extension would be 9998. So if I wanted to go back into auto attendance, I'm going to go back into my test auto attendant and I want option nine to connect to that queue, I would select call queue. And I just remember either the name, which is Doral sales team, or I can enter the extension number of the queue and I'll see it pop up right here. Perfect. That's pretty, pretty cool. I've also seen that we have a very interesting feature where we can set up a, uh, a, a prefix so that if we're not having separate tiers, we can set up a prefix so when a call comes in, an agent might recognize that a call is for either the billing department or a billing issue, either a tech support issue or something else. So that means that when we pick up a call, you can immediately say, thank you for calling billing, even though this, that person can also pick up the call, the next call and say, thank you for calling tech support. So that's also a, a feature here available on, on auto attendant, right? Absolutely. It's actually a great feature for when you have a dual uh, bilingual um, call center, for example, you want to know if somebody called in using your Spanish number or if somebody called in using your English number so you can answer that call correctly. Perfect. One of the nicest things also about the auto attendant and the, the service here at Nexus is that when you go to on the, this manager portal and when I when we say manager portal, it's basically the admin portal that, that uh, certain people have access to at an office, right? Uh, if it were a, an end user portal, you don't see much functionality, but the manager portal has access to the uh, history as, as you see the call history, as you see, all, as you see all the way to the right. So what happens if somebody dials a toll free number and then the call gets transferred to a call queue or a voicemail? Is that available on call history? I mean, or am I blind on those calls? Oh, absolutely. You can actually go into your call history and you can actually look at those calls, filter for the number that might have called in if you know it, and you can see exactly where that call ended up and how that call you know came in so i can i can i have i can freely say that our, our auto attendant feature has also accountability absolutely that's awesome absolutely okay. that's pretty cool um eric how much is the auto attendant how much do we charge for the auto attendant it's absolutely free it's absolutely it's included with the service so i think that's what uh, i think most most people here wanted to hear this is a, a a free service there's no extra charge for auto attendance i've seen in the past other providers charging for not only auto attendance but different per tier. I've seen that if you have like press one for English, two for Spanish, three for, fr uh, for French, I've seen that as three tiers and I've seen providers charging on a per tier basis, which is like obviously crazy. Why would you do that? I mean, this is a service that belongs to a old legacy PBX. Just because this is hosted PBX and this VoIP, voice over IP technology, they shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any charge. So that's what Nexogy basically follows and that's uh, that's how we go about it. So that's, that's something that I wanted to throw out there because it's another of all the features that are free included with the Nexus service for a single uh, user uh, per user per month price. All right, perfect. I see that I have a, we have a couple of questions uh, coming in. Let's open up the, the Q and A and um, see if we can quickly answer this question. So. How can I record my own greeting? Uh, we have a question here. All right, let's let's uh, quickly uh, address that one. Um, can you show me how to uh, quickly record an auto attendant? Yeah, absolutely. It's very easy to do. So again, I'm extension 5295. Once I'm in my auto attendant page, let me go ahead and share the screen. Sorry about that. There we go. 
So I'm in my auto attendance page. I'm gonna select which auto attendant I wanna record the greeting for. In this case, my test auto attendant 7575. If I click here to add new menu prompt and I don't have the file saved on my computer, I can hit the record button and the system will actually send me a call to my extension so that I can record it right from my Nexus G phone. All right, so why, why don't we do this practical? Click on that uh, call and see what happens. Okay, I have to add a description. So we'll do test greeting and I'm going to call. And the system is calling you back so that when you pick up, you basically record the prompt. Yeah, so right now my phone's ringing. If I wanted to pick it up, I can actually pick it up, record my greeting. As soon as I hang up and hit done, it will automatically upload my recording into the system. And so when that auto attendant is reached, that's the prompt the colors are gonna get. Yeah, yeah, and the upload is instant. Excellent, that was, that was pretty simple. Yeah, pretty simple. We have a couple of other questions here. Can I select as many time frames, uh, time, frame, time frames as I wish? Certainly, right? Absolutely, you can create as many as you need. You can even apply multiple time frames to a specific user, such as you wanna have an after hours time frame, and let's say you wanna have a lunch time frame. So that after hours, I go to the after hours auto attendant, but during lunch, reception takes my calls. Okay, so that basically applies to what we said before about coming in on the 2nd of January and setting up all the time frames pertaining to all the uh, holidays for that specific year. Excellent. There's a question that, um, does Nexigy have the ability to record calls? Yes, Nexigy has the ability to record calls. Even calls coming in in an auto attendant are recorded when the call if the call is prompted to press two for customer service, for example, uh, the call will still be recorded and those uh, can be seen on the call history. Uh, you can download the call recording, you can play it back on the, uh, on the portal, and you can also see uh, when the recording portion of the call through the auto attendant and then when the call was transferred. So that's, that's also uh, available. Not related to this, but I'm so happy to answer this question. How long has been Nexigy in business? Nexigy, as a hosted PBX service provider, has been in business since 2003. So we've been doing this for 16 years. We know what we're doing, but we're not, uh, we're not tired about going and doing that. So I guess those are the questions that we have today. Um, if there are no more questions coming in, is there anything you want to say or, or, or to our uh, attendants here today about uh, the other attendant? Um, where can they reach us if they have any questions about this? Uh, email, phone, what, what is the best way to communicate with us? Well, if they're already Nexigy customers, they can always dial 611 from the Nexigy device. That'll connect straight to the uh, auto attendant actually, and they can reach out to one of our support reps. They can reach us by email at support at Nexigy.com, or they can give us a call by dialing one 866 nexigy one and I assume that 1866 one it's an auto attendant that is being configured by us and it's following all the time frames. Absolutely. All right. Well, that sounds great. Well, Eric, thank you very much for your time. I think uh, there's a, a good thing here for that everybody can take away. And uh, again, feel free to re reach out. Let us know how can we help. Then again, there's another free feature from Nexigy, the auto attendant. Thank you very much and see you next Thursday. Thank you all.